With that, let's go to the uh, first phone call of the evening. Hello. Um, hi. Um, in regards to the economy, as it gets worse, I think we're going to see a lot more civil um, unrest and, and rioting, like in Oakland. And I would like to encourage all the law-abiding citizens to go coon hunting and start uh, capping some beaners. Is that really what you believe? You really think that's going to fix the problem? Yeah, I think that all these gangs... Don't you think that's going to add to some of the civil unrest? And I know what you're saying about the gangs. We could talk about that. But uh, the reality is it's not going to make it easier for more bullets to be flying, and it's going to make the streets a little less safe. Uh, don't you think that uh, there are some people out there that are black, that understand what's going on, that are against some of that gang violence? Don't you think that it might be jumping the gun to marginalize a whole group? Well, that's you have a point, but sometimes they do that to white people too. The sometimes I hear black people talking about white people in ways that I don't agree with either, and I think they're marginalized. I think racism is pretty much unacceptable altogether. But I understand your point and your concerns, and I share the same concerns. We have way too many scumbags in this country running. Scumbags those. would be a, a better word to use, but we do have scumbags running the country into the ground. And uh, let me tell you something about the police. You know, they don't have a vested interest in. People need to listen to this, keep on our streets safer. With the recession and the near depression that we're moving into, I got pulled over twice last week, and the reality is they're hungrier for tickets, anything they can get. It's not just about, uh, you know, the things that used to be. Now it's like everyday mom, pa, individuals, everyday Joe and Janes, uh, driving down Holgate Street, worrying about the police. And when I'm getting pulled over, I'm looking down the street, a block and a half, there's somebody else pulled over. I look to my right, there's somebody else pulled over. And so, Well, uh, sure, $200 speeding tickets are ridiculous, but I hear you all the time, Alex, talking about how black people are abused by the police and the disproportionate amount of blacks in prisons. And my response to that is that, you know, the government, anytime you have a larger group of people, they have to somehow try to deal with whatever situation. And when you have a far greater amount of crime going on in a certain neighborhood regardless of skin color that's where you're going to draw the police attention so therefore there's going to be a lot of people arrested maybe even for minor offenses that other people may be committing but they have to focus on the, the hot spots you had mentioned riots in oakland and i want to address that and some people don't know about what's going on in oakland and the police shot a black man in the back and they pulled him off the subway were accusing him of all types of things they roughed him up all types of videos were confiscated and some have actually uh... were um, some people were able to get those cameras though um, away from the police or some were able to get out of that situation with their footage and it's online and so when you look at that don't you think the government wants to provoke maybe not in this case but in many cases some sort of a riot to a certain degree, to look at LAPD, for example, the LAPD and the Los Angeles riots during the Los Angeles riots during the 1990s. Right. You know, by showing that on the TV screen over and over and saying that we're going to acquit these white officers for the uh, unjustified beating of Rodney King, you know, that's going to be the predict predictable response. And uh, it was horrifying to see what happened. And I think uh, when people talk about gun disarmament, they ought to be thinking about how those Koreans were able to defend their shops when they were defending their property against looters and gangbangers that were pretty much hurting anyone they could. So my, my advice, and then we've got to move on to the next call, is to get prepared for more crime and home invasions. And we're seeing more reports in rural areas outside of Portland, outside of Salem, but uh, it's not just going to be blacks, my friends, uh, or uh, Hispanics. It's going to be whites, uh, Asians. We can't marginalize by race. People that live in our community are turning more and more to crime, and I don't think it's a racial thing. Well, I, I'll give you that, Alex, and I appreciate the, the uh, discussion with you, but could I just say one last thing? is When people criticize police, and sure, some make mistakes, but I don't think you can criticize someone that's out there trying to protect everybody else and put their life in danger. They're not all in that unless, mindset. Unless you're, well, no, but many of them are, and, and many people that criticize them wouldn't have the guts to you know, enter a confrontation and step up and, and, and you know what I like to see happen? Someone. More cops speak out about the stuff going on so we can have more of a dialogue. And I don't seem to have those interactions police, with police officers uh, the way that you may have, but most of the ones I talk to don't want to talk to you about those things and they're, they're, um, 
in a culture where it's acceptable for them to turn into robocops and kind of you know, act like there's this us versus them type of mentality which actually makes the problem worse but i want to thank you for your call and while i don't agree with uh, what you have to say, some of what you have to say, uh, I'm not going to suppose some sort of legislation to have you locked up because uh, you might believe differently. What we have to understand is that we have to talk about some of the stuff. And uh, there's a lot of people that uh, are very angry right now. And the last thing I want to see is people get caught up in the, in the race war trap. And I think that's the government um, playing with us when they're uh, dividing the races in these elections uh, and the sexes. When the New World Order is one of the most racist organizations out there, this global entity, the New World Order, when you look at the Third World, and people go, well, the United States has uh, helped uh, do all this stuff to rebuild and rebuild. Really? You mean a few million here to special contract groups and a lot of money getting locked up in bureaucracies? And then you got the Monsanto Corporation through the World Bank saying, you got to take our seed if we're going to give you the money. And so all this stuff is, is reaching this point where we have to realize that the new world order, these global banks, have manufactured a lot of chaos and created many ghettos. And then when you look at African Americans and the creation of ghettos uh, in this country, you had the white zone, you had the black zone. This was the high property area. And the government had lots of money, lots of spoils of war after World War II, and they segregated along those lines and built nice schools, things of that nature, in certain areas. In other areas, it was a little bit different. And so things like that have contributed to the divide in races in this country. And unless we address those factors, we're going nowhere. And with